It was foggy in Iowa this morning, very foggy. <laughs> By sunrise, we were in a very large bus rolling towards the town of Independence, two hours north of Des Moines, along with a couple dozen members of the press and a handful of campaign workers. Right now we're on schedule. It's just we have some weather issues. So the bus arrived at the first event before Senator Clinton did. We're in Independence, Iowa. It is foggy, as you can see. We left Des Moines on the press bus, which is right over here, about 6.30 this morning. Uh, we're here at 9.30 in the morning, but the candidate isn't. Who had the idea of doing a helicopter blitz in Iowa in the winter? So this morning, it was back to the old-fashioned way, car. Hey, how Hello, are you, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Great to see you. So, whose idea was a helicopter in the winter in Iowa? Well, I have to confess it was mine. <laughs> and it worked really well yesterday. When it worked. But, uh, you were grounded, actually, weren't you, for fog? Yes, yeah, we, we could not get up and out. So we drove, and we're here. And I'm going to go speak to everybody who's been kind enough to wait. I'm going to see you later. Yes, you are. Great. Let me just say, though. Is third an option in Iowa at this point? Oh, I'm having such a good time campaigning. I'm just going to go out and see people and persuade them to uh, support my candidacy. I take it, no. Third <laughs> is not an option. And next to the United, Hillary Clinton. We might have broken a few speed limits, but don't tell anybody. It may be but late so in coming great. with only two oh, weeks until Iowans vote, but this tour is an all-out attempt to let people see the candidate in a more human way. <laughs> Officially, the Blitz is called the Every County Counts Tour. It might as well be called the Likeability Tour. There are those who say that this side of you isn't often seen, this sort of dare I say, human side. You just said downstairs, it's hard for me to talk about myself. It, it, it always has been. I'm a more reserved person, and I really have always thought that um, you should be judged by your deeds, not your words. But obviously, in today's political environment, there is a legitimate interest in finding out well, what motivates a person. It doesn't come naturally to you. No, it doesn't. And you know, I don't think that that is um, important but it is informative, and so I want to inform people. And people want to know who you are and what you'll do. And I ask people to look at what I've done and maybe listen to you know, many of the people who have known me uh, and who have worked with me and whom I have tried to help over the years. I'm not really good talking about me. So, so last week, the campaign launched an effort to showcase those people, friends, constituents, including many of them in a new website called The Hillary I Know. The Hillary that I know is a compassionate woman. The Hillary I know saved my life. Were you reluctant to, to ask friends to, to, to do it? I was. I, I bet you were. I was, you know, because of the, I mean, I just feel like, you know, I don't want to go around bragging about myself or saying, oh, you know, I helped to get health care for six million children or I helped to, you know, reform the education system in Arkansas. I'd, I'd rather just let that speak for itself. But in a presidential campaign, you don't have the luxury of that, which I have finally uh, had to come to grips with. Because even in New York, I could meet enough people. I could have a ripple effect of friends talking to friends and family talking to family. And pretty soon, a lot of people creating a critical mass could say, hey, I met her. I got to know her. She's not as bad as I thought. <laughs> Well, but, but there is that element. As you know, know, there are a I lot know. of people who, despite what they admit as leadership skills, just don't like you. Well, and most of them have never met me. And most of them, um, I'm just going to keep getting up every day and telling my story and talking about what I want to do. I just want to go back to the website for a minute, though, because as I looked at it, it's terribly sweet in so many ways. And yet... <laughs> It sort of has this Sally Field quality to it. You know, they like me. They really like me. And, and I wonder if it's not a double standard. I don't see the guys doing it. Are you judged that differently, do you think, on the personal level? Oh, I, I think that uh, that's the world we live in. I understand that. I accept it, but I don't let it deter me. You know, that wonderful old line about uh, women do everything. Uh, it's like uh, Ginger Rogers mm -hmm. did everything Fred Astaire did, only backwards and in high heels. Well, we just have to go out and do it. So, you know, there's no point in, uh, you know, worrying about it. Likeability has always been a problem for Clinton. And with Barack Obama's rapid rise, she seemed to get the message that experience alone was not going to win her the race here. People had to like her, too. 
I have my mother and my daughter with me tonight. My Late last week, this ad featuring her mother and her daughter came out with the not surprising but very effective message that her mother really likes her. Really. The campaign seems to have decided that if Hillary Clinton is to go personal, it should be about herself and not other candidates. The attacks on Barack Obama in recent weeks landed like duds. Someone with little national or international experience who started running for president as soon as he arrived in the United States Senate. Let me ask you about the going negative. You made a speech in early December and you said, now comes the fun part. I have been four months on the receiving end of rather consistent attacks. Well, now the fun part starts. Did you really mean that? Because it didn't look fun to me from where I sat. It didn't look like you were having much fun going negative. Well, I, what I was really trying to inartfully say was the fun part is when people start to make up their minds. You know, when you can see voters begin to really resolve who they're going to be for. That's what I was talking about. And it really sounded yeah. as if you were saying, now comes the mudslinging, now I get to hit back. Well, I think that uh, that was the way it was interpreted. That's not what I intended by it. I do think it's legitimate to draw a contrast. This is the fun part. This is the fun part. Up, up, and away. When we come back, is the Iowa fog lifting for Hillary Clinton? Tonight, she answers Barack Obama back. Little Iowa towns like El Cater are where big political ambitions are being played out. The second stop on another marathon day with the Clinton campaign. Now, some people think I am maybe too serious a person. Well, that's not the way I am all the time. That seems to be the point of this last blitz through Iowa, where insiders worry she could well end up third, not only behind Barack Obama, but also behind John Edwards. So your husband says it's going to be a miracle if you win it. Is he setting expectations too low? I mean, come on. What, what, I mean, is he setting expectations too low? Well, I think anybody would tell you that I started out very far behind here because I had never really spent much time in Iowa, unlike... You know, my, uh, one of my major competitors, I wasn't from next door like another one. So I really had to start from ground zero. And so you don't even say his name anymore. We're not saying Barack Obama. Well, I, I hardly ever refer to my opponents because I want voters to make the decision looking at each of us. I want them to decide that I'm the person who would be the best president because obviously that's the case I'm making. Barack Obama has been very specific about you, especially recently in a Nightline interview in which he said, let me make sure I get this right, he says that you claim all of the successes of your husband's administration uh, but none of the failures and says that, listen, Michelle hears me talk about my life as a senator, she doesn't think that makes her qualified to be a senator. Would you respond to that? I am a senator. <laughs> I have been elected twice in... Um, a but you understand very, the point. Well, I understand the point, but it's, it's really beside the point. Um, I have been very forthright in saying that um, we weren't successful in health care. Uh, the whole world saw that. But I think you know more about someone by seeing how they respond to setbacks than successes. He, Barack Obama has been quite effective, though, with some people in, in painting you as someone who is an opportunist, as someone who is not principled, relying on polls, not principled, he would say, uh, relying on calculation, not convictions. Do, do, do you, how do you fight back against that? I've never been deterred by criticism, and I don't intend to be now. You know, I don't really care about any of the hits that people make on me. It's, that's fine. I can't control it. They can say whatever they want. There's never a night when you go back to whatever hotel room, <laughs> whatever city you're in that night, and crawl in a ball and say, I just, this just hurts too much. No, it really isn't. I, I, you know, really? you, if you'd been talking to me 20 years ago when you know, Bill was in politics for the first time and... You, you all of a sudden are subjected to all of this criticism. It takes some getting used to. Coping with insults is one thing. Coping with helicopters and fog and the cold is another. Is this the, is this the fun part? This is the fun part. This is the fun part? Up, up, and away. There you go. All right, so you're going to hop to the next event, and then we're going to meet you back in Des Moines. In Des Moines. See you there. It's a there date. You go. Finally, at nearly 5, the helicopter takes off for yet another little town and more retail politics. Whether some of this frantic last push could have been avoided had the senator worked the rural areas earlier, we will never know. Whether it has worked, we will know soon enough.
There are going to be people who vote for the first time ever in a presidential election this year who are 21, 22, 23, 24 years old, who ever since they were born have either had a Bush or a Clinton in the White House. If you win, I mean, it's been Bush, Bush, Clinton, Clinton, Bush, Bush, Clinton, Clinton. It is, it, do you understand why some people think that's not good for America? I mean, Barack Obama being one of them. Well, I can understand why people would um, raise that, because obviously uh, that is the pattern. But I also think what's great about America is anybody can run for president. Uh, I want to prove that women can run and win uh, to be president. There's been a lot of talk about the role your husband is playing in the campaign. Would you just settle the record? Is he, in fact, creating the strategy at this point? You know, he is having a great time, and I'm loving having him out on the campaign trail because he makes a wonderful case for my candidacy. And, you know, everybody's spouse is trying to do that. Uh, he gives me a lot of advice. Sometimes I take it. I used to give him a lot of advice. Sometimes he took it. It's been suggested that he owes you this. Oh, I don't see it that way. You know, he's been incredibly helpful to me in everything that I've ever tried, and I've done that for him. Uh, we started, as we like to say, a conversation all those years ago, and it's taken us to a lot of interesting places, and it still goes on just as uh, you know, much today as it ever did. One of those interesting places, she hopes, will be somewhere they've been before, the White House.